My God, turn with me to the book of Matthew. Take it up to number 18 for me, Mahogany. I shifted a little bit. By the way, you look real beautiful up there, woman of God. Already. My God. Woo, my God. Come on, let's say amen for Minister Tony and the praise and worship team. Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. Let me take this few minutes just to kind of stay in the river of everything that God is doing. And, you know, when you're handling the pool pitch, you, you, when you have reverence for God, you really don't want to touch certain stuff, mother. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to bring, ugh, it's dangerous to interfere with the presence of the king. When the God's glory has manifested, my God. Some people don't understand. I know I'm strange. I know we strange, but you just you just don't want to just step up in there with your agenda, Pastor Chapman Sharon, start doing what you want to do and it's interrupting the presence. Oh my God, the presence can do more than anything that I can ever say. Oh my God, if you just learn how to just bask in his presence, I promise you that what you walked up in and with you won't walk out of here with it. Oh my God, can't nothing unholy dwell in the presence of a holy God. So that means that what you walked up in there got to die. Come on, give me some volume, son. That what you walked up in there, my God, you get into the presence and got to die. You ain't got to do nothing but just be there. Oh, when the Shekinah glory fill the temple, all you can do is bow. Oh, my God. It ain't always easy. Some of y'all don't understand, my God. Oh, my God, why sometimes I linger and I don't touch something. Uh, yeah, yeah. I won't move until God say move. So if we strange, we're going to be strange. Oh my God, it's thick up here, boy. This anointing is thick. Oh my God. Mark, I mean, Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse number 18. Reading from the New Living. Thank you, Pastor. It says, This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother was Mary. I mean, his mother Mary was engaged, I pledged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant <laughs> through the Holy Spirit. Ain't nothing ever touched her and she pregnant. That's supernatural, right? Turned itself. Then verse 19 says, Joseph, her fiance, was a good man. He was a, a man of integrity, the scripture says, and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so Joseph decided to break the engagement quietly. See, Joseph didn't understand what was going on, but this was all God. See, sometimes we don't understand. And so, therefore, when we don't understand with our finite fleshly mind, we want to disrupt. I, I get out of something that's God. Here it is, this woman, this man is pledged to be married to this woman. All of a sudden, she's pregnant. And because Joseph was a righteous man, my God, he was a man of respect, respectability amongst his people. And so what they was going to say, like, man, this woman pregnant? Oh, my God, he must have committed fornication. Yeah, that's Bible. So he said, you know what? I got to protect my reputation, so I'm going to slide out. I don't want to bring no shame on me, and I don't want to bring no shame on her. So I'm going to try to create something to move out real smooth so I can move on back mine. Oh, we didn't done that before, too. Yeah, we didn't done that before, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Verse 20 says, as he considered this an angel, his plans was to divorce, I mean slide away. But as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid. Take Mary as your wife, for the child within her, within her was conceived. By the Holy Spirit. See, this is supernatural. Everything that you experience today is supernatural. This ain't flesh. You can't conjure up this type of environment. You can't conjure up this type of anointing and presence. It's supernatural. My God, if you're fleshly, you'll miss it. My God. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, my God, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God came down in the flesh. He's a monster. Wrapped in... When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. Quit vacillating and quit wrestling with God. What God, the angel told Joseph to do, he got up and handled his business. See, some of us is in a way... God, is that really you? Did you really say that? Marry this woman? God, is you sure? Just obey God. The blessing is in obedience. 
It says, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But, but he did not have sexual relations with her until his son, to her son, to her son, was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Father God, thank you for your presence. Lord, I felt this morning that you was going to do something. And you have already done it. Just give me the opportunity just to share some encouragement with your people. Thank you for stopping by going off for of Christ Church today. Jesus is Lord in this church. Your will will always be done. I thank you for the people. Save somebody's soul. Don't let nobody leave 2018 unsaved. Don't let no one under the sound of my voice who has walked away and turned away from you remain on the outside. Bring them back to the kingdom. Today is the day of salvation. Lord, we would not cross over, Lord, without being in right position with the king and his kingdom. Let your kingdom come in this word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I see the time is at hand, so I'm just going to wrap with us a little bit. Is that okay? Before I say anything, I want to take this time to say, if the Lord delay is coming, my God, if not, I see you on the other side. But I want to say happy and merry Christmas to everybody in here. Come on, let's give God a hand. You might not have the, your, your Bugatti out there. You might not have your new Louis Vuitton, but you got a whole lot to be thankful for. I said, let's give God a hand. Come on. My God. To my knowledge, you didn't get that phone call about your son or your daughter. Somebody give God a hand. My God. I want to talk to you about this supernatural baby that we have all worshipped today and that Minister Tony so beautifully laid out from a kingdom perspective. Boy, that boy is full of the kingdom. Boy, Papa will be proud of you. And me too, because I'm still pushing. And you, Margaret, we pushing the kingdom. I was just with a pastor the other day, me and Pastor Dean. I'm pushing nothing but kingdom. I ain't pushing no church. I ain't talking about nothing church. It's kingdom. Church don't change you. Kingdom changes you. God. So I want to talk about this, this, this baby. I had a moment up here. I don't know if y'all seen me, Sister Keisha, but when I thought about the name of Jesus, it's Jesus because I'm free today. It's Jesus, Mama Donna, that I ain't selling my clothes for drugs no more. It's Jesus that I am really, really free. I ain't just talking free. I'm talking about real freedom. Oh, my God, it's Jesus. Barry, I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. Jesus. Oh, they don't understand, my God. It's something about the name. I almost had Tony pull it and say, say the name of Jesus. You don't understand the name of Jesus. When Jesus is the center, when Jesus is Lord of your life, what that means to your future and your destiny. Many of us are defeated because he ain't Lord. He's just Savior. And when he's just Savior, that means you are on contract. When he become Lord, you move to covenant. Because when he become Lord now, my God, his rule, his kingdom, his ways, don't nothing else matter. And so therefore, you and I, my God, when he's Lord, wants to please the king. Because ain't nothing like being in the favor of the king. Because when he start blessing his subjects, my God, blessings reign. That's why it's dangerous, my God, to sit in the midst of the church like this and your heart be not right. When God start opening up the floodgates of the kingdom and pouring, not sprinkling, start pouring down. Don't you know you could be sitting here and the blessings fall and it miss you because your heart ain't right. Well, we're not going to deal with that this afternoon. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about this baby, and I don't know how much I'm going to get free. I told my God, I, you know how T.D. Jakes just, you know, uh, he'll read the scripture, and he just started talking. He just started walking. I said, I'm going to have to do that one. I think I was telling you that, but I'm just going to have to just do that one time and just see what God want to do. I can talk about Jesus because he's a really, really, really a personal God to me. I don't know about you, but I can really talk about Jesus. I don't need no scripture. I just got to just think about, ah, if I just think about the goodness of the Lord. Mm. My God. A name, though, a name. Let me bring some context to the scripture. A name is the title by which one person is designated from another, i.e. Taylor Johns. I ain't going to say you, Sharon. I'm going to leave you alone. I.e. Tony Mace. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Yes, Lord. But a name is a title by which one person is designated from another. This name ain't just an ordinary name, y'all. This name brings separation. Lord Jesus. 
It is a way, talking about a name, for us to tell people, places, and things apart. Old Testament times, a name stood for a person's reputation, their fame, and their glory. You just didn't name a child for the sake of naming a child. Parents often gave children names that describes the parents' hopes and future expectations regarding their child. God, the angel told Joseph, you're going to name him Jesus. I'm going to tell you what his name is. You don't need to even pray about it. His name is Jesus. Y'all with me so far? The word, my God, the word, uh, the word translated in the Old Testament, talking about names, literally means a mark or a brand. A study of Bible names often reveals much about a personality of the people mentioned. For instance, let's look at David. David means beloved. Abraham means father of the multitudes. Jacob means trickster. And if you read your words, see that you would understand what, what I'm talking about. Because he did a whole lot of tricking. He lived up to his name. All these people prove true to their names. In this uh, message, though, the name Jesus is the name that has been exalted above everything. Philippians 2, 9 through 11, write that down. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, therefore, God exalted. That's the highest level, y'all. Mm. Exalted him, talking about Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. You can't, you can't make this name equal. You can't bring this king down here and make him equal with your car, equal with your purse, equal with your nails, equal with your hair, equal with your clothes, equal with your husband, equal with your wife. This ain't that type of name, baby. And this ain't that type of person. See, many people bring, try to, they think they are, bring that name down horizontal. This name got to stay up here. See, when he stay up here, then he become Lord and Savior. I ain't got too long to mess with you, so I'm going to give you what God gives me. Are you with me so far? My God, we got to understand this name, according to the scripture in verse 10 of Philippians 2 and 10, that the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and will bow in heaven and on earth. Just like we got to bow in the natural, they bound in heaven right now. Said, holy, 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 Sharon is the Lamb of God. Uh, you don't get to get up there and, and do it your way. If you make it up there, you're going to be totally submitted and surrendered, my God. And it's going to be holy, holy. And you ain't going to get tired of saying it. Because you're going to be real grateful that you made it in. And every tongue, uh-oh, acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God, the Father. So I want to talk to you about the power of this name. And the power that's in his name. See, there truly is power in the name of Jesus. A lot of us understand this name Jesus from a church or traditional mindset. Minister Tony, my God, you flow so, my God, supernaturally, my God. Who, my God, supernaturally in the kingdom? Because, see, really, the Bible, as the late doctor made me understand, Dr. Miles Monroe, that the Bible, my God, this book in your hand, on an iPad, my God, really, this book, my God, is about a king. And his kingdom. That's why when you look in the Old Testament, my God, everything was set up and ran from a king perspective. But when God delivered the people up out of Egypt, God was trying to bring them back to covenant. Because they was used, my God, to a physical pharaoh, a physical king telling them what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Come on, somebody. I said they was used to a physical, physical pharaoh telling them what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And so when God delivered them, my God, from captivity from Egypt, he was bringing them back to covenant. And so he was teaching them, my God, now you're not going to be told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it by a physical man, a physical king, or a slave master. God is saying, I'm going to bring you back to me. And now my voice is going to become Lord in your life. So they had to stop, my God, by pit stop number two called the wilderness. Wilderness preparation for freedom. The next place after the wilderness was Canaan, freedom. But God had to retrain them. See, some of us, my God, when you come to the body of Christ, we so used to coming out the world, operating up under the first Adam. My God, really, when you give your life to Christ, you're supposed to become like the second Adam. My God, but we so used to operating and living, my God, from the first Adam, even though we profess to be Christians. So God said, you know what? I got to deal with you, my God, concerning, my God, your identity. Yeah. 
Your identity is now in me. Now you got to begin to formulate your life according to who I am. My God, Ephesians 4. My God, be imitators of Christ. And so God said, I got to bring you back over here into the, tra into the training and start preparing you, my God, to handle this new mindset, this new kingdom. That's what God is trying to teach us today. Amen. How to have dominion on the earth from the second Adam. He came to restore the kingdom. He came to seek and save that which is lost. He came to give us dominion. Watch this through him. The Bible says, put to death, church, my God, the deeds of the flesh through the spirit. Some of us, my God, is frustrated even though the spirit and the presence of God has moved. But we are extremely frustrated because we can't overcome these same hangups and habits that we've been having for a long time. And can I tell you that the reason why? Because we're trying to overcome something that the spirit has to put to death. When you and I try to kill stuff by the flesh, all it's going to do is resurface. Let me tell you what I mean as I move. When you and I deal with the fruit of sin, because you know sin bears fruit too. It's just bad fruit. You have to go and allow the spirit of the living God, my God, to go down to the root system and kill and dig up the cause of the bad fruit. We just deal with the symptoms surface. Oh, my God, but when God is trying to do a real work, because when you allow God to hit that root system, see, then you got real transformation. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, that's why we frustrated, because we allow God to deal with the symptoms, but we ain't allowing God to deal with the root. The root is the problem. My God, it's not the symptoms. I can't get nobody. That's why you can't quit smoking cigarettes. That's why you won't quit sipping and tipping, because you're not allowing God to hit that root system. Are you with me so far? But we don't want to talk about that either this afternoon. Let's talk about the personality of this name. So put point number one. The personality, Emmanuel, Mama Donna, God with us. Emmanuel. Remember names in the scripture ain't just names. They're not just words. It says Emmanuel, God with us. So let's bring that up to the New Testament, Destiny. You know what it says? God said the kingdom of heaven is within. Now God is on the inside. Oh my God, so where are you taking them this afternoon when you leave the church? Emmanuel, God with us. This is part of his personality. And his personality, my God, you can write this down up on the point number one. My God reveals that he was a supernatural baby. The scripture bears it out. He was not just another child, y'all, but God in human flesh. See, this is what trips up a whole lot of my Muslim brothers because they don't understand how Christ, my God, is God in the flesh. They say he was just a prophet. My God, I went through that stuff when I was back in the day. My God, my God. But God is, my God, Jesus is God in the flesh. Some of you right now still wrestle with that, but it's okay. Let me give you some scripture because the Bible says, let me be a lie, but let God be the truth. So I'm going to put some word on it. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there because the word is truth. I'm a lie, but the word is the truth. And the Bible says in Philippians 2, 5 and 8, in your, in your relationship with one another, have the same mind said of Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God. Something to be used to his own advantage. See, he could have used his who he was to his own advantage, but he didn't. Verse 7 says, rather he made himself nothing, talking about God, by taking the very nature of a servant. Translate slave. Being made in human likeness, talking about God. And being found in the appearance as a man. The Bible says God humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. The Bible says, my God, that God looked for somebody, but he couldn't find nobody worthy enough to die for the sins of the world. I said he looked. Ah, oh, my God, he created the earth, my God, and seen it and became wicked and all that stuff. He looked for just one. Can I find one person? Come on. My God, come on, Solomon Gomorrah. Is it just five people? Is there anybody in this, in this kingdom that's righteous? I look for one person out of all the millions of people on the earth at the time he said I can't find not one verbally to die he loved you and I that much he said I can't just let no contamination I can't just let no flesh I, I can't just let no anybody my God die for my people my God I need something that's mm, without spot a blemish 
That's why when they made Old Testament sacrifices, you couldn't offer God bullocks and lambs that were spot, spotted and defective and sick. It had to be pure. It had to be healthy. Oh, my God, symbolic of the lamb that was going to be slain before the fowl. Don't get me started of the earth, my God. You couldn't just give God no, 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 no broken down sheep, no broken down bullock, no broken. You, it couldn't be one eye and one leg and a couple of somebody. It couldn't be spotted all up. We's a perfect and a holy God. So let me bring it up to our times now. I'm kingdom. You can't just give God any type of worship. You can't come up off in here with all that old coolness and our men and women, all that coolness for men and cuteness for women, and just be giving God what you think you want God to give it. That, no, no, you can't sit up with no attitude in the presence of a king. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Because when you get in God's presence, if you got attitudes, you got the bad eye. Sin can't live in the presence of a holy God. And so you could not, and I could not offer God just any type of worship. Y'all need to catch, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going right back to her. I'm not even, oh my God. You, you, you can't give God anything. You can't give God any type of worship. You can't give God, my God. That's why I said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You can't come before. If you understand that right there, I promise you, if you really get it, like Dr. Miles helped me get it, my God, you cannot come before a holy God, a king, any kind of way. Bring it up to our town, that means you got to bring your mess. I got to bring my mess and submit it. You don't get to sit in your chair and be bitter and be angry, impure, wrong motives, and think that God's going to receive your worship when you can't even forgive your brother and sister sitting right beside you. The Bible says when you're at the altar pa, a praying, if you realize you got something against somebody, leave that gift, go be restored. Back, that's kingdom. You can't treat this name and you can't treat this baby any kind of way. Because this is a supernatural baby. This is the king wrapped up in swaddling clothes. This is a king that said, I can't find nobody worthy enough to die for friend setter. I can't find nobody worthy enough to die for Tamir. So therefore, I got to create somebody. Come on, somebody. Meaning I got to create myself a human being. I got to create flesh. So this is where we get the Trinity at, my God. Oh, my God, one part of the Trinity left heaven. Because you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, my God, when Jesus come up out the water, my God, he was baptized, the Trinity was there. God said, this is my son, who I'm well pleased of. So you had God, my God, confirming, my God, that this is my son, Jesus, my God, and the Spirit of the Lord led him. So you had the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost right there in the Trinity. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, that's too heavy for some of y'all. We talking about Jesus. You can't just give him what you want to give him. You got to do it according to the kingdom structure. The same baby that I'm talking about, oh, goo, 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 goo. No, that was a king. That was a king who wrote this. And when a king make a decree, it's final. When a king, when a king my God, my God put his signature stamp on it, ah, it cannot be reversed. He can't even go against his own stamp, stamp signature. When he stamp it, it's done. I promise you that helped me be able to understand my walk with God over 20 plus years ago to deal with God from a kingdom mindset. And so I started reading books by the late Dr. Miles Monroe. I went to a conference for seven years in a row called Kingdom Conferences, and I understand that this is about a king and his kingdom. This ain't about church. It's not about your tradition. It's not about your denomination. It ain't about none of that. This baby that's born as a young baby was a king. Are y'all with me so far? So write this down up on the point number one. This also, my God, this, this spirit be, reveals a supernatural birth, birth. We understand it was a not normal birth, but a virgin birth, which produced a child without a sin nature. That's why God was able to come himself and die for the world, because he had no sin in him. The Bible says he who knew no sin became sin. There wasn't no sin in Christ. Some people try to say that he sinned, he drunk wine, he did all this old type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying wine ain't gonna see in hell, but I'm saying he had no sin. None. None. Because if he had an inch, listen to me, y'all. Everybody, please look at me. If he had just a <coughs> snippet of sin, he would have been disqualified to die for the world. I'm talking about he couldn't even have a dot. You know, a little ink pen, a little ballpoint ink pen, it, it, could, it can't even be a dot. You can't find it nowhere. That's why he said, I got to go down. I can't find nobody worthy enough to die for my people. It's too much sin. That's why the Bible said it grieved God that even made man because they had become so wicked. So quit telling God, God know my heart. You know how wicked our hearts is? 
God know my heart. Me and God got our own thing. You and our heart is so wicked. God can say, I, I got to deal with you by way of the blood. If you I let you come to me with your wicked, nasty heart, I kill you, God says. That's why he got to deal with you and I from the blood. Oh, my God, if I had time, Tony. Kingdom. So this wasn't no normal birth. So when you come to the house of the Lord, my God, when you open up your Bible, I need you to understand you're not dealing with, 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 with some boy, some baby. That's power in this name. This name, my God, would divide kingdoms. Oh, my God, the name of Jesus would cause mama and daughter to be separated. Father and son. Uh, the name of Jesus bring division, my God. When you stand for the kingdom, militia, when you stand for righteousness and holiness, it's going to separate the sheep from the goats, baby. Oh, my God, it's power in this name. This is not no ordinary name, nor was this an ordinary baby. Minister Tony just sung about it. This is a supernatural birth. Isaiah said it this way in 714, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign and the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and we will call him Emmanuel. Now how in the world is this woman going to be pregnant and I'm watching the babies and nobody never, mm, she was, he was not conceived the way you and I was. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for proper verbiage on the pulpit. This person I'm talking about wasn't conceived like you and I. So quit trying to dumb him down. Quit trying to treat him like he's a human being like you, because he ain't. You can't handle this king any kind of way. Oh, he had a different type of mantle on his life. I promise you, if you go with me in the spirit, my God, who you will benefit in 2019 from your relationship with the king that was in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Oh my God, I tell you, he made all the difference. Oh, when Korean son the song, won't he do it again? Yeah, he'll do it again. He didn't did it again and again and again. All you got to do is look in the mirror, Dominique. Just look in the mirror and think about what it should have been, could have been, would have been. Come on, Shay. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's why I told y'all God dropped the word in me. And I put it out there on Facebook. My God, let it go. Let it go, church. All that stuff you trying to drag. When they came up on the other side of the Red Sea, everything that was supposed to die in the Red Sea died. Everything that was supposed to die in the Red Sea. Everything, everybody, every place that was supposed to die in the Red Sea died. Only that which was supposed to go to the freedom came up. Why are you trying to drag all this sin and flesh into freedom? Don't drag that stuff into 2019. Let him go. Let her go. If you got to shift, shift. Get on, my God. But whatever you do, my God, let it die. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because all you're doing is weighing yourself down. And this God that I'm talking about, that's mm, a baby as I'm speaking right now, my God came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. That's super abundant life. Not that you could take a trip here and there, get a purse, get some hair, get some nails, get some shoes, get a suit here and there, whatever. My God, now we're talking about super abundant life where you are gifted givers. Well, God, make sure you can get plenty to you because he can always get it through you. You never got no lack. Everything you touch turned to gold. Dr. Miles says that, my God, don't you know, thank you, Holy Ghost, that there's so much potential and purpose in you and I? That Dr. Miles said, my God, that you and I got to allow God to put such a demand on your potential and your gift that when the people think of kingdom, the first person would come to mind was Dr. Miles. When they think of leadership, my God, kingdom leadership, the first man that will that come to mind is Dr. Miles Monroe. You got that much potential when somebody think about something, you are the first one to come to mind. That's a genius at what God has called you to do. You need to be exercising your purpose and your potential at that level where, oh my God, when they think of a church and stuff, little fuzzy should be the first one to come to mind. He said, while you are sleeping, I'm up working. Yeah. Want everything, but you don't want to pay a price for nothing. Gifted with ability. Only thing holding you back is a bad attitude and a filthy heart. Lay it on the altar. Gifted with obedience. Gifted with talent. Gifted with potential that the world needs. Everything that God has given you and I, the world needed. He would have never gave it to you. Somebody's waiting on you. Quit quoting who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same. Do something with the gifts and talents that you got. Oh, we still talking about the name. I'm just putting a demand on the gift. And the potential and the purpose. I'm trying to build you and expose you to this real king at the same time. Something on the inside of you. I teach my ministers, don't just hang, don't just hide behind your giftedness. 
Ain't that right, Korean? We're not just hiding behind how gifted we are. My God, this is an art with purpose and potential. Oh, my God, heaven stands at attention, my God, when the worship go forth. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm, I'm in another place. Tony, I'm in another place. Mm. Look at number two. Let's go to number two. I ain't got alone lonely. He had a person I, but this also, he has a purpose. So do you. He got a purpose. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a purpose. I'm going to come over here, Destiny, because then nobody look at you, Destiny. I don't want you to feel sorry. My God, Destiny, you got a purpose. Lisa, you got a purpose. Oh, my God, I'm serious, y'all. Touch your neighbor and put your hands on them and say, you got prophesied to your neighbor. Let them know you got a purpose. Oh, my God. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. Even Keith. Even Keith got a purpose. Keith, my God, has tasted the goodness of the Lord. Keith worship God more, my God. Everybody was sitting down, Keith was over there grooving. Oh, my God. His purpose, Jesus, Jehovah is salvation. Write that down. That's what his name, Jehovah is salvation. The name Jesus reveals that, oh my God, I mean, this speaks of his desire. Write that down. Jehovah is salvation. This speaks of his desire. Write that down upon the point number two. The name Jesus reveals a God with a desire to save sinners. Don't leave you today knowing that you're not saved. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't leave this place knowing that you're on the outside of the kingdom. That you are here, but you're out of position. You can't receive the benevolence blessings from the king. Make sure that you give your life to Christ. I'm going to make sure that you have an opportunity. Don't let the enemy rob you, my God. What they going to think? They, they think I was going hard. I was worshiping. Don't let the enemy rob you. Obey like Joseph did. When the angel confirmed, leave his thing alone, he got up and he did what the angel told him to do. Don't leave up out here out of the will of God. Mm. God has a desire for all of us to be saved. He don't wish that none of us go to a burning hell because it's real. We are told that Jesus, talking about Jesus, came into this world not to condemn the lost, but to save them. This, truthfully, was not a new desire because he was trying to do that even in the Old Testament. They asked for a king. God said, no, you don't want no king. That king going to hurt you. They begged him for king, so here come King Saul. God didn't want to give them that king. He wanted to be their king. God is saying the same thing to you and I today. He wants to be Lord. He wants to be king. Bishop taught us two weeks ago, whatever's sitting on the throne of your heart, that's what you worship. Who's on the throne? When God is on the throne of your mind, heart means your mind. When God is on your throne, you want to read your Bible. You want to pray. Anybody got to make you obey God. When you, understand that the, when you understand that the king has all of the keys to the kingdom to unlock, my God, who supernatural breakthroughs and supernatural blessings, it's easy for you to honor God with your tithing. When you understand, see, a lot of us don't tithe because it's a trust issue. With trust issue, it's a heart issue. We see what I'm trying to say? So the king wants to bless you. And when the king is sitting in his throne and lifted, highly lifted up, my God, in your mind, set your mind, Paul said, on things above, my God. Set your mind, set your affections, set your thoughts, set your focus, laser focus on God above. God is high. He said, if I be lifted up, bringing the people up vertical, quit trying to bring God horizontal. Set God in your mind. And when you set God in your mind, and then the steps of a good man are ordered. Because God is not ordering your steps because he got your heart. Many of you, God can't order your steps because you won't give him your mind. The Bible says it's with the mind that you and I serve God. So after you give your spirit to God, your, your soul to God, now you got to allow God, now you got to give your mind to God. That's why Paul said in Romans, let uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Go from a caterpillar to a butterfly, and you do that by the renewing of your mind. Quit just giving God your soul, my God, but give him your mind. Because yes, yes. if it's your mind, it's where you serve God. Many of us is defeated in our mind. It ain't got nothing to do with the devil. It really ain't got nothing to do with your flesh. It's your mind. Whoever get the mind, get the life. Many of us, it's hard to stay in God's will because we let too much stuff get in our mind and we become cloudy, my God, and we start trying to do stuff ahead of God, getting out of God's will, listening to the wrong voices. That's why Jesus said, be careful what you listen to and who you listen to. 
The Bible's always warning you and I, my God, to protect us. This king is trying to protect you. Jesus' name protects you. Who am I? Don't you know, my God? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't you know, my God? I made my mind up a long time ago, Barry, that I would not be no hypocrite. Yes. So don't you know, my God, if I remove the principles and the standards of the kingdom up out of my life, what's going to keep me from going back to my former life? Yeah. What's going to keep me from not being faithful to my wife? Yes. If you remove the structure, if you remove the standards, if you move, remove and compromise the principles of the king, what's going to keep you? The only thing that's keeping me, Brian, my God, is the standards of the kingdom. You take the standards of the kingdom out of my life, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, I'm too heavy. Boy, y'all better, y'all got to go a whole other level in 2019. If you remove the standards. See, see, see the name of Jesus and the decrees and the principles and the laws that he put in place in Genesis through Revelation protects me. See, we think that God trying to control you, but God is trying to protect you. Because if you don't, my God, if you don't submit to the principles, you're going to kill yourself. Think about what you used to do before you try to live for God. Ah, don't get me started, Tasha. Think about the things you was doing, my God, before you started trying to live for God. You and I would kill ourselves if we didn't have God. Ooh, boy, don't get me started. I'm trying to, I ain't got no more one more. I thank God for the principles. My God, the principles safeguard me. My God, what so if some of y'all don't know, this is the principles. This here is not an enemy. Without this, you and I will surely die. Without this, you and I will surely kill ourselves. And you know why so many of us defeated? Because we try to compromise the kingdom principles. Submit to the principles and it'll protect your life. Oh, Lil J, obey this and God get the, the sky's the limit for you, son. Don't sidestep this. I promise you God will catapult you to another level. Commit to this right here. You watch God to give you favor. It almost she can la la basha. Favor. Favor. Oh, my God. T.D. Jake said, I'd rather have favor than anything. The favor of God. You ain't got to have no money. You ain't got to be educated. You just need the favor of God. How did Jason, my God, a red chef freshman, now he's starting, my God. How did he? How, favor. How did that door open? How did she get her? How did they get that job? How did that happen? What? 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 what, what how did you? Favor. I'd rather have favor than anything. Quit trying to rush the hand of God and just walk in his faith. Think about it, church. Don't remove yourself from the principles. And guess who the principles is? Jesus. <laughs> Say the name. Jesus. That's all you got to do is say his name. Let me help some of y'all because I want to liberate the spirit of God. I want to liberate you. A lot of you trying to get free from stuff. Emotional pain, mentally pain, physical addiction, that too. See what I'm trying? Just obey the principles. Because let me tell you something. Can I help you understand? Yeah. Let, me, let me help you understand something. It's real elementary, but let me help you. It's real elementary, but let me help you. You're already free. You're already free. You and I, all we got to do, mama, is... I set before you life and death, blessing and curses, choose life. All you and I got to do is choose God's principles and you're free. You're free because of what he did over 2,000 years ago. You're already free. So, so, so when you and I stay bound up to stuff, you're disqualifying yourself and you're making that king look bad. Because let me give you this as I got a few more minutes. Let me give you this. Don't you know, my God, that we are subjects? We are sub Even though this baby, even though G God became as a baby... Like man, but you know that when he came, even though he was a baby, did he had all the power in the world, and he was in a manger. <laughs> With all the power in the world, in a manger, all the power in the universe, in the whole world, came down in a manger. They couldn't understand it. So that same power that came down and rested in a manger is afforded to you and I when you are in connection and in covenant with the kingdom. When you get in covenant with this baby, all the power that he had as a baby, you and I got. That's why the Bible said you can call those things that be not. 
That means, let me, so, so little Juju that's sitting in Leavenworth Penitentiary, I already called those things that be not as though they are. It's just a matter of time, D, before he come forth. I seen the vision. Oh, I was here this morning in first service, and I seen my baby when I was praying, standing right beside me, Barry, with his hands lifted. My God, I already seen it. That's why I keep going, because I done already seen it. I done seen my son right here, like my daughter, going home with his father, because I call those things that be not. That, I done already seen seen it Tasha now I just got to be patient enough to let it manifest I can't lose my faith I can't go by what it look like I can't go by what it sound like what did God's promise to say it said if I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart me and my household shall be saved that's called household salvation I done already claimed it I done already seen it I just got to walk it out now that's all I just got to walk it out I got to keep worshiping I got to keep praising he coming he coming that was for somebody that was for somebody that wasn't just for me that was for you what you believe in God for oh what do you believe in God for hey come on Shaman what you believe in God for come on I know you know Tiffany Tiffany walked it out baby she's seen it oh we see seen it you gotta go back home I ain't going nowhere I seen him hey, hey, hey. you need to walk away go home Tiffany said I ain't going nowhere I seen it Oh, you got to see it by faith. Oh, my God. You got to see it by faith. Oh, my God. Call those things that be not. This is the power and this is the authority that you and I have that was given to us by a baby. <laughs> we got that much power, that much authority that we things that... Things, Robert, that don't even exist. The Bible says, if I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart, I shall be saved, Cornell, and my whole house. That's called household salvation. It's going to happen because I said it's going to happen because God said it's going to happen. If God said it, he won't return. Oh my God, his word won't return forward. That's the book. That's a promise that God has given you in our church. All you got to do is just keep on serving. All I got to do is keep on showing up, baby. All I got to do is keep on forgiving. Keep on walking in love. Keep on telling them yes. Keep on saying, God, here is me. It's me, Lord. I'm back again. I'm standing on your promises. I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. I'm going to be right here till my change come. My mind is made up. I'm sold out. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. In you I live. In you I move. In you I have my very being. I don't care what that can't nothing get to me. I'm hands in. Can't nothing touch me because he got a wall of angels around me. He said it that he would do it for me. And I'm going to believe your promises. Oh my God, my heart is set like a flint towards heaven. And I'm not going to let you go until you do what you said you're going to do. I know you're going to do it. I got faith that you're going to do it. I'm praying that you're going to do it. I got believing that you're going to do it. Who am I talking to in the church? Oh, we talking about Jesus. Oh my God, Jesus. Come on and say that name Jesus oh just call his name Jesus what are you believing God for I didn't close the book oh my God I didn't close the book what do you believe in God for Emmanuel I said Emmanuel God with us <laughs> oh do you want God to be with you oh my God come on come on step in the river come on step in the river come on and step in the river what do you need right now oh my God do you got faith Faith that won't be moved. Faith that it ain't no shadow of turning. Or do you got faith that I'm going on to see what it is? Of a same light gonna be like. Let God get in. Let God get in. Give him permission. Give him permission for that way with son. Give him permission for that way with wife. Step in the river. Step in the river.